All right. Well, welcome everyone to the Networking Masterclass for November. I'm your host, Dave Potter, and I'll be guiding you through the, the webinar and the topics today. So with that, we're going to get started. So before uh, we begin the, uh, the actual content of the webinar, we always get new people coming and I love to see new folks joining, but there's always these questions that come up. So I just want to get these out of the way. Uh, for, there is audio now currently, uh, just starting now. So if you still cannot hear me, then I invite you to try some of the other options in the GoToWebinar dashboard or control panel. Uh, if you're having a little bit of problem hearing me on computer audio, you may have better luck with the phone call. We have phone numbers available in all countries. Or if perhaps you're on a phone call and you're having trouble, maybe computer audio will be a better option for you depending on your environment and connectivity. Next, we really invite your participation and really appreciate it when you do. So if you have some thoughts or some questions as we go through the content or any part of the webinar, please post your question into the Q&A panel. That'll come to all the panelists that are on the webinar, and we'll do our best to get back to you during the webinar. However, if for any reason we cannot get back to you in the time uh, concluding the webinar, we invite you to email us at networkingmasterclass at citrix.com so that we can get back to you offline. Finally, if you need to step away or uh, you want to share some of the content or perhaps you just want to go back over some of the content from today again in the future, be aware or keep in mind that this session is recorded and we'll be sharing a link to both the recording and the slides later after the session. So if you need to step away, uh, feel or not, you will be able to uh, experience or read, uh, learn or listen to that content following the webinar with the recording in the link that we'll send out. All right, so who's with us today? So I'm your host, Dave Potter, for uh, our second session for the Americas. And joining us as a guest presenter is Neha Harib. Neha will be covering a great topic for us. It's very important. It's all about visibility. So today's agenda is all about the Citrix ADM service. And we'll be covering a lot of really neat features in the, that are new to the service that really enhance and provide ways that you can see your network performing, see how your applications are performing, and what's really exciting and robust and revealing in our newest version and release of the service. We also have a new white glove program for onboarding into the new features of Citrix ADM. We'll be sharing, uh, if you see what you like, uh, if you like what you see, we'll be sharing a way uh, for you to have the opportunity to join us to get your hands on some of the newest features ahead of everyone else. And then finally, I'll be closing out the webinar toward the uh, end of the hour with what's new, what do we see happening, and then our closing notes. Uh, we're always interested in future topics and what you would like to see. So if you can think of any topics that uh, you would like to learn about in the future, we invite you to submit that or your request into the Q&A panel in the control panel for GoToWebinar. So this has been, we've got a lot of good feedback recently. We really appreciate that. It has really um, allowed us to focus on what we find or what you find most relevant. So we want to continue to bring you the content that you like or that you're most interested in. So if you think of anything that you'd like uh, from today or just some other topics in mind, say you're regular on the webinar, we invite you to submit your suggestions for future topics in the Q&A panel. All right, so who's with us today? We have some great participation from our uh, friends in South America. Thank you uh, to the folks in Argentina, Peru, Colombia, and uh, Venezuela. And India is an interesting one because uh, it seems like we get a lot of participation from India, both in our first session and our second session. So it's really exciting. Uh, welcome. So we, we continue to get a lot of participation from India in both of the sessions. In fact, if uh, you know, everyone from uh, the continent of India were to, to join uh, into one session, they'd probably make a, a huge bulk of our audience, like uh, the following countries here today. So joining us with a little bit larger population, we have a good focus and a good quorum in Canada. Welcome, and especially welcome to those in Brazil. A lot of you join are joining us today. And of course, thank you for those in Mexico as well. And uh, should not be uh, without saying, the bulk of our audience, uh, I welcome you from uh, those of us in the United States. Uh, it should not be a surprise, the webinar is based in the US, 
We really appreciate you and continue to uh, enjoy sharing the content with you. So thanks to everyone joining us today. All right, so with that, we're gonna go ahead and, and dive into the content. And joining us today is Neha Harid. So Neha, uh, are you on the microphone? Yes, Dave. Hi, Neha. So welcome. So uh, shall I go ahead and make you presenter? Please do. All right, you have it. So before we begin, uh, Neha, do you think we should uh, run a quick poll? Yes, so we can. Okay. Let's start with that. Okay. So let's bring that up. So I'm going to launch a poll for the audience here. And really, it's just to get a quick uh, feel for uh, where everyone is uh, in terms of leveraging or interest is in using uh, the main service that we're presenting here today. So the question is, do you currently have or use Citrix ADM in your environment? And what I'm looking for is, you know, sure, uh, but no, but maybe or definitely no. So if you could go ahead and uh, complete the survey, that'll give us just a quick count and a heartbeat on where our audience is. And we can focus the content perhaps on, you know, if you're not exposed to it at all, maybe we should focus on, on getting you into those features and why those are valuable. Or if you've already used it, we're gonna give you a lot more. All right, so it looks like we're getting some good participation. It looks like just over half of you are currently using ADM and uh, uh, about 30% of you are not using with uh, a little bit that are planning to get in. So hopefully with the content today, uh, we'll get you a little more from the plan to into the yes category shortly. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. Thank you so much. And with that, uh, Neha, if you'd like to kick off um, and tell us what's going on with ADM. All right, thanks, Dave. Hi everyone, I'm Neha. I'm part of Citrix ADM product management team. I'm gonna uh, take you through uh, what do we have to offer for, uh, to you over end-to-end um, -end visibility into your network using Citrix application delivery management. Now take a note, we used to call it NetScaler Management and Analytics System. Uh, with the rebranding that we recently did in Citrix, it's now called Citrix ADM. Now, Let's get going. Now, if you have any comments or if you want to uh, share about the product, uh, please feel free to use the hashtag uh, which um, Dave uh, ha must have posted on uh, the chat window. Now, let's take a step back and understand why do we do what we do? Why are we building a product like this? What's the need of it? In a typical organization, we have multiple roles. We have a network admin and an application admin. <clears throat> Whenever a user issue comes in or slowness issue comes in, I'm not able to access the app, the app is slow, um, the finger pointing starts. And that's exactly what we try to resolve. With our solution, we will help not just network admin and app admin, but multiple roles understand who really needs to look into the issue, where the issue is? So is it at the client side of the network or the internet, which, uh, which is slow because of which um, the user is facing slowness? Or is it the backend app server? Is it the data center network? Or ADC was misconfigured or recent config changes caused some disruption? So it is essentially to help you achieve and focus on your business goals. to enable you have high application availability by giving you the right, right visibility on how the availability is varying in your environment at the right time with the right information, <clears throat> helping you enable get uh, best app performance. If you're, uh, if you're able to uh, get the right notification of the alerts uh, and exact the, exactly the information where the problem lies, um, you'll be able to focus more and have a better app performance rather than spending time on troubleshooting. And at the end, have an autonomous ADC infra wherein with the information that we share, uh, you'll be able to have a system wherein if you're able to find out 
where the problem is, you'll be able to rectify it. So that's that's a key goal, and that's why we have ADM today. And how do we do it? We have launched this intuitive analytic solution suite, which is smart because we we assessed all our customer scenarios, the history that we had, um, understood that which are those specific events and uh, and traps encounters over which uh, so many troubleshooting cases uh, have been resolved either the app issue or adc issue misconfigurations multiple of those events and were uh, thoroughly analyzed and we figured out those events that should be triggered from adc for adm to correlate with the data and bring you insights so we made the solution smarter ensure that it is connecting the dots from multiple touch points that typically you'll have to assess through multiple logs to really understand what's the trend and make it actionable. So we will let you know that if the SNP port exhaustion is happening, what do you need to do about it? If um, and when it happened as well. And if uh, there are SSL session buildups are happening, what what really you can do to uh, ensure that doesn't happen. Now, that's exactly what the intuitive analytics suite uh, puts forward, a smart, connected, and actionable solution. Now, these are the use cases that we solve, uh, provide you over intelligent analytics, web transaction analytics, infrastructure analytics, global service graph, cloud native analytics, and bot management analytics. These are a few sort of features that we have which solve multiple scenarios and multiple use cases, and that's exactly what we'll talk about. Typically, Citrix ADC uh, is able to load, balance, and optimize all kind of apps, be it 3D web app, Kubernetes apps, or virtual apps and desktop. When the point that I mentioned about when we step back and understood all different kind of events that we have observed over the time, we take that information, feed that into ADM, and give you multiple features which will help you resolve multiple use cases. Web transaction analytics, cloud native, for specifically for app admin and SREs, idea ops for infra, security operations for bot management analytics, and across all uh, the roles, intelligent analytics and global service graph. This is the agenda for today, wherein I'll take you through intuitive analytics solution suite uh, across all the features that I've mentioned about. We'll have a live demo across as, as and when we are done with the section. We'll go to a live uh, demo setup and showcase um, what's there uh, available uh, as a use case uh, on a setup. Then um, what is ADM service? Uh, we'll have a walkthrough of how onboarding is done within three simple steps, few announcements and key takeaways, and towards the end, a launch of the White Club program. Let's start off with the first one, web transaction analytics. What is web transaction analytics? Why do we need it? So, we used to get a lot of custom requirements from customers of we need one specific parameters uh, from the log or the other. So they used to be so uh, very specific to the customer scenario and environment. It used to only come from one customer. But those one request started increasing a lot. So we decided to take a, take a step back and provide the complete connection log, transaction log to the customer so that you can troubleshoot your way, but with the uh, but with a twist of being able to give you that which log to look into. So we will assess, let's say all the all the applications uh, or the transactions which have greater than 500 millisecond response time will be collected. Uh, if a transactions have 5xx response code, will be collected so that you can drill down and assess further. So we will give the complete connection visibility, enable you to search it better, segregate the logs over role-based access. So um, all the logs will be there, 
if you want only specific app administrators to have a look at the uh, specific app related uh, logs you will be able to do so and um, we connect the dots by connecting the app score so we at every app level we, uh, we calculate the application score uh, to understand what's the performance, quantify multiple factors, and give you this one number which will help you understand how application is performing. And when you want to understand better, understand more, you can drill down to the logs. There are multiple custom use cases. It solves a lot of customers are asked for. We, we need handshake failure information. Foreign sync department wanted every single transaction timestamps. A uh, few wanted slow app server transaction details and many more. So um, this will be the search panel. Then uh, you get a transaction rate of um, when these specific anomalous transactions are being collected and generated at the same time at ADC. And this is the complete connection view, end-to-end -end latency measurement from point of the typical RTD collection uh, metrics from client to ADC, ADC to server, <clears throat> the L7 metrics, the SSL parameters. So you get all the information up front here. So I'm gonna switch to a demo. Mm, yeah, here you go. So this is my web transaction analytics. Now I've selected a filter, so I have ways for uh, me to select specific filters. I've selected a front-end failure um, error here and these are all the transactions which happen around 12 a.m. on 8 October and then uh, again at the same time 12 a.m. at 9th October. So I see a pattern here and then when I drill down further I see um, details of SSL 380, handshake failure, the protocol details, so it's a <clears throat> scripted data. <clears throat> so you'll see the browser as Python here, uh, but uh, in a valid traffic, you'll have the right browsers mentioned. You see a split of the latency. The RTDs are very less, so there are no issues. You see the server response time. The backend server is taking too much and too long to respond, which is 1.3 seconds, which is quite high. <clears throat> And you can see the split. So that's why the RTDs are not showing as high, but the overall response time is high. And you can get the response code, all the information available here. So if my session is not timed out, I should be able to select other parameters as well. So I can select <clears throat> key strength and get this. So there are 18.35k transaction with um, 2048 key exchange. You can see here all the details of the transactions. Now I can select multiple um, parameters also. So I want to see with uh, 2048 uh, key strength and then the front end failure. I can do that as well. And now if I deselect this, I can go back to the protocol and I want to select and see how many transactions are over 1.1. <clears throat> I can see all the transactions with 1.1 uh, and rest of the details. Typically the ADC processing time will be less than uh, 1 millisecond. So you won't see it unless um, there are, there are some parameters missing, there's something wrong. So if it goes up high, you, that means you need to take a look at um, how you've configured your ADC and optimize it. Then you have a distribution of response code. You wanna look into 404 specifically, you can do that. So these are 404s. You have the client IP address details, the URL, quest type. This one is taking five seconds, so it's a faulty transaction. You might want to look at um, where it, the split is, and you see server response time. The backend app server is taking too long, and it's clearly visible. 
So this is how the web transaction analytics works. Uh, I'll just go a step back and uh, show you how the navigation works. So I'm at this uh, app. I start from the app dashboard here. This is my app dashboard. I see this app one is um, the size typically of, an, uh, of the box. Uh, the box represents an app. The size of the box represents the usage. So if um, the this is app one is the biggest box here. It represents that this is the most used app. And um, then we have SharePoint. When I drill down further, I get uh, all the information of um, what's the transaction per second rate that's going on, the connections, the throughput. I have an option of uh, uh, selecting the live uh, data as well. So if I do this, I'll be able to see the um, current rate of transactions per second I'm getting. So at the moment there are no transactions, but I have, so you can see clearly here, how many packets received, sent, all the details. So um, the transaction log is where uh, you have to click here and uh, see the details. Okay, so let me switch back to slides. Uh, go to Infra Analytics. Why do we need Infra Analytics? The fact is that um, today we have a data overload. Even if you're using ADM, there's so much information that you have to parse through. We have a SSL dashboard, we have the main inventory dashboard, config audit, network function, reporting. Even for an SMB deployment, you end up having around thousands of events as this log traverse through to get to the meaning of the data. So what we do is um, we try to resolve it. Now, what are we trying to resolve? Why do customers uh, or you guys are going through so much of data to ensure Availability is good. There are no high resource consumption, no hardware issues, capacity issue, unused inventory, expired certs. And there are multiple more. These are just a, uh, to list a few. And why uh, are the customers con are concerned about this? Because if ADC is impacted, your application is, uh, is also impacted, which can impact your business. So with that, uh, what we did was we uh, we introduced a solution to have a faster resolution uh, time, which correlates multiple data together, brings out patterns up front, quantifies all the problems over one instance core, links the infra to app. It's very important to link the infra to app because infra, the ADC is optimizing everything. And if there are any config issues, something, uh, something got misconfigured, some hardware issues or any, any kind of issue that happened on EDC, uh, it can impact application also. So you should be able to link and see what is the impact on the app and make it actionable so that you can take actions. Let's say there's a config drift because of which, you know, the overall health score has gone down. Uh, you should be able to revert it back. And you can customize based on um, customize the scores based on uh, your assessment criteria. <clears throat> so this is how the instance score worked. Today we have this, we collect this, a lot of information about SNM, critical SNM, we trap, HA state, cluster uh, state, SSL configuration, config uh, overall config management, availability, system resources, and calculate this instance score. This is how the dashboard looks like. We're in. We will be able to view um, the segregation of your instances across data centers. Um, the end circles are data centers as highlighted here, and the circles within them are ADCs. So if there are red ones here, that uh, signifies that something's wrong with our red one and you might want to drill down further to identify. It could be resource issue, could be any kind of uh, performance indicator issue. 
which you might want to drill down. So this, this particular example is a, a site with six ADC instances. And the red one, when you hover around, you understand that this guy is running out of capacity. It has reached 95% uh, of the allocated capacity. And the green one, um, for obvious reasons, is in a good state. So <clears throat> this is how it simple it becomes. If you, if you see, there are so many ADCs here listed. And with one glance, you can get to the point. <clears throat> the orange one represents a review state. Uh, might not be too critical, but you want to have a look at it. Um, and the criticality can vary across customer to customer. So you can customize it the way you want. So there are four instances with SSL cert um, that are expired. Now, uh, linking the infra analytics uh, to intelligent analytics, we added a few more pieces of information and events based on our learning as what we observe in the field. SNP port exhaustion, no route configured, VLAN mismatch, VRD conflict. Multiple of these events we um, now are going to collect <clears throat> and give you more insights as to when the instance score is showing a threat, you have more uh, data to understand why. Now let me switch to demo and <clears throat> take you to a setup. Now, this is my infra analytics at the moment. So what I've done is I have multiple ways. So I don't have too many ADCs here on the setup. Uh, let me see if I can go to full screen mode. Yeah, so I have, uh, I can group these bit based on data centers, uh, but I have grouped these on versions. Um, <clears throat> so you can see that uh, there are two on 11.1, uh, two 12.1, and then uh, one is on 13.0. Um, I can uh, group them uh, over sites as well um, and give the sites as name. Then if I want, I can uh, group them over models. This is 3000 VPX and this is 8000. Versions we have already done. This is for types, so all of them are VPXs, so the types are clubbed together. You see that this one, size typically represents the usage and the number of uh, virtual servers. So these, the red ones are down. So you don't, uh, that's why they're showing up as red. Uh, wherein uh, this one has problem across uh, config drift, um, some SSL cert issues, some of them have expired. There are non-recommended algorithms. Now I will uh, click on its individual details and understand uh, what kind of config drift has happened. You can click on the config drift. And I see that there are a couple of corrective uh, configurations. I can create a job out of it and then execute and get that corrected. So that's, that's what I was mentioning about, that the information you get, you can take action on it as well. Now if I go back, under the SSL certificate, um, you get that for that one instance, you have the complete summary of the certificates. There are some not recommended uh, signature algorithms. You can see which ones are those and you, you can take a call. If you wanna move them to recommended months or you wanna remove these, uh, and um, mend these um, signature algorithms, you can. Okay, so now if I go back to the infra view for a bit, uh, I have ways, I have multiple filters here uh, wherein I can uh, select different type of views. I'm gonna select, um, so there is no, no, um, ADC in good state. There is a, a traffic profile selection also. So if I want to select um, for a specific range that is mentioned here, there's one ADC with this throughput range of 800 kbps to 1000 kbps. Reset. Now even for HTTP requests per second, I've selected 1,000 to 2,000 requests per second. This is one ADC, and this is the other ADC. 
and so on. So this is how you can also filter through specific traffic profile to understand about the instance. These are, these are the instance information you can filter through to the way you want and drill down further. And there's a search panel as well by hostname. So this was infrastructure analytics. Um, I have to go back to slides. Intelligent analytics. Now, um, this is a feature that we launched um, using machine learning and uh, statistical models. We will help you identify what happened uh, and identify the low performing apps, why it happened, get you to the root cause of the low performance and how it can be resolved, recommends action to resolve the issues. Now, um, we built over algorithms which were refined based on our learnings, validated across customers, tuned it to align with identifying the right use cases so that we were able to detect abnormal increase and decrease and avoid false positives and uh, by discarding spikes. Now, um, with that, we introduced several response time anomalies, which is based on machine learning. Uh, se uh, session SSL session buildup scenarios, service flaps, and 5XS response code, which are based on statistical models. Going with the first use case of server response time anomalies, the use case is that we know that every application behaves differently. If you give one threshold for all the apps, might not be right because different apps have different behavior, access patterns. Um, setting one threshold might not work well. And when you have a big farm, it becomes all the more difficult for you to uh, set up uh, these kind of threshold and assess through historical data. So what we do is we assess every app in its context. We understand the pattern of that one app in its context and then identify anomaly. So whenever, let's say, we identify the pattern of the response time for that one app, um, and every single app that's, that you've configured, but in the context, every app will be considered and assessed uh, for its own data. And an event will be raised when we see an anomaly, you click on that event, and is when you get all the information. So you have on the top the recommended actions for slow response time and faster response time. When you see slow response time, uh, it, it can uh, signify some issues at the backend server. Uh, probably you need to write LB algorithm. You might want to increase this uh, server capacity if none of those checks which are uh, recommended um, are done. At times, when you have too many erroneous response codes, you can get faster response time also. So even that is anomalous. So abnormal decrease is also an important pattern to take a note of. Uh, if it happens, we will bring it up and bring it to your notice. That's what you put to the table. We will give you the information of the uh, uh, LBB server, instance IP address, state, service, and then we will give you the anomalous um, even that has happened. You will be see, you will be able to see a shift in the median for that. When you hover around, you get a clear information. So at the anomalous uh, duration, the response time was 41 millisecond at this 31556 uh, AM. The service response time increased by 132% median response time change from 17 to 41 between the selected and showcase duration. So it becomes very simple for you to understand what really happened and what we did to say that this is an anomaly. Second use case is the SSL session buildup. Um, SSL session buildup can cause large memory buildups, impacting performance across existing SSL uh, sessions, leading to low app performance. So the feature is that we highlight uh, such events and provide recommended action for resolution. If you see this, um, you will be able to see that um, when the event happened and um, the current session, uh, the current number of SSL sessions seem disproportionate considering that you have only, uh, you don't have any SSL handshake per second happening. So you might want to uh, see your re reuse settings or you want to meddle with your uh, timeout configurations. So before I switch, let me take you through 
SSL session. Yeah. So if you see here, this is a SSL session buildup event. You get clear information here. And the, uh, the current um, number of SSL session are these, but then you have only nine handshakes per second happening. So you might want to have a look at it again. Let me see if this guy has session timed out. It looks like. Because I'll have to log in again. All right, so this session is also expired. Okay, so um, I'm going to move on uh, because my network is uh, super slow at the moment. Let's go back. Now, um, the service flaps um, are the times when uh, customers, your users and employees complain that at times the app is accessible, but at times it's not. Um, what could be really happening? So for you, um, at times the backend app servers are intermittently unavailable. So when you check, you know, their state will show up, but then at times uh, because of the network connectivity issue between the ADC uh, and the app server, this can uh, this can happen. And we have seen this uh, happening across multiple customer scenarios and deployments. So we bring that up um, by showcasing the state changes, um, too many flaps um, up front, and it becomes all the more difficult when you have a huge app farm and even if you have a uh, application farm of five or four uh, app servers for you to uh, catch that flap uh, at the right time is also difficult so it's always better to see that and assess that um, over events and logs so we identify those and then bring it up up front <clears throat> so let me show you on a setup Uh, wait, um, okay. okay. This is a service lab event. I can click on it and understand um, how the flaps are happening. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to get back to it in some time. Now, um, so this was a service flap event. Now, coming to the cloud native analytics. Cloud native analytics is specifically focused to ensure that we are able to cater to SREs and DevOps uh, user segment we will be able to identify which are the faulty microservices, uh, what are the factors of issues, and transaction details. Essentially, we decompose your application, give you visibility into services, service deployed, current state, highlight dependency, uh, help, help you understand the data flow across uh, the multiple services, impact uh, providing you impact analysis bottleneck detection um, and critical services and um, we calculate this one service score with over latency and error rate which will help you visually see if one service is not doing well what's really going on so um, you can see here that uh, every circle here represents a k8 service Every the no color represents a service score. Size represents the number of connections. The edge between um, the two services represents the transactions between the two service. Edge color represents uh, is based on the errors. So if there are too many errors on a particular transaction, it'll show up. And width represents uh, the number of requests between services. 
So that was the cloud native analytics what we had, which is helping a lot of our customers. The moment we talk about it, um, it, it helps them um, visualize how it will be able to help them see where the problems are. Now let's get to the global service graph. Whenever uh, an application performance issue happens, you will be able to see um, with this view where the users are who are not really happy. So in this case, uh, you, US uh, users, few of them are not really happy and having bad experience. We'll give you a way to see, you know, is the client network latency or the internet connectivity bad and poor? Is it the ADC which is faulty because of any kind of misconfiguration, hardware issues, uh, any performance problem or resource bottleneck? Or is it one of the backend servers? So it gives you a way to, for you to visualize as to what's really happening. Um, and if users, my users are facing slowness, where is it originating from? What's the root cause? Let's move to bot management analytics, wherein uh, we'll take you through a demo. So Door Cleans is a large online pharmacy and user log in to order or refill prescription online. Now recently what had happened is that they're facing too many fraudulent orders and shipments. And they wanted to understand what's happening. So it is under constant bot attack including uh, password spraying. And you can see a spike uh, in, the, in the transactions at the time around the bot um, attack was happening. So the moment you enable the bot management, you will see in the uh, traffic pattern a dip and we'll go to the uh, earlier pattern and go to the expected rate. And all the login attempts are blocked. All right. Now let's go uh, to why ADM service. So we have a solution. Uh, we have our ADM on on-prem and service. And um, service essentially gives you a true hybrid multi-cloud control plane because it gives you a secure connection between your any any distributed deployment you have with the agent deployment. This agent sits in the uh, edge. Sits at the edge. Com um, compresses it and uh, summarizes data at certain level and sends it to ADM service so that you can be, save on the bandwidth, you have a secure connection. Any information that goes through, it is um, secured. Gives you, with that, it triggers and then enables uh, centralized visibility. It reduces infrastructure and expertise cost, which essentially means there's no maintenance. That means no upgrades, no reboots, no backup, no DR, no system prune management, no HA management, and no data management. None of that is needed as you need for a traditional deployment. And then on top of it, we have this express tier wherein you can try all the features uh, which are limited, um, but there are a few features who are limited to two units. Analytics network function and reporting is limited to two virtual servers. Config job to two uh, config jobs, style book to two config packs. And the data retention is 500 MB or one day, whichever breaches first. Now let's see how to onboard on ADM service. Now I go to the ADM um, tab, get started, and then select on the built-in agent. Now, if you see here, we have an on-prem VM version option where you can on your traditional deployment deploy this VM and then um, connect to the ADM service. This is about, this the step is about selecting an agent type. So you're going to deploy uh, an agent. The other one is um, if you have your ADCs in public cloud, you can deploy an agent there and um, that can give you a secure connection between this uh, ADM service and your public cloud. And the last is uh, the built-in agent, which is we already have a built-in agent within ADC. So if you have an ADC, 
above 12 row onwards um, you will be able to trigger complete access to ADM without having to deploy anything physically so uh, we have selected the built-in agent here we go to next Oops, sorry yeah so um, here you copy the service URL take a note of the activation code and then you'll start a session uh, per session with um, or ADC log in to your ADC here <clears throat> shell access pair folder access the mass tools folder and then trigger the script so script uh, prompts you certain points of password your service URL and activation code so you go back and copy paste there with the space in the middle <coughs> between both and that is all you need to do you're good so uh, you deployed your agent or enable the agent within the ADC with this and with this we will have uh, the ADC discovered as you can see and when you click to infra analytics you'll be able to see the new instance added All right, so that's all that we had. Now, um, Citrix ADM service, we have launched a white glove program. Why, uh, what is this program and how it will help you? Now, we are helping our customers understand ADM service value add more. So we, you will have a dedicated Citrix point of contact for all your ADM questions and queries. We will guide you through how the onboarding uh, is and how uh, overall use cases are that you can leverage. ADM today uh, uh, serves and hosts multiple use cases. Um, and uh, we will help you steer through the right ones, which makes sense for your scenario. So uh, I'm gonna ask Dave to post um, the form here uh, to the chat window to everyone we'll go in just a moment and i'm gonna flash that uh, form here so if you see here it's a form wherein uh, we're asking your details uh, email address you can uh, mention the your citrix contact that you have and um, if you can right now, uh, you can fill in uh, when you would want to get on a call for the first Vitaler program. You can fill it or leave it blank if you're not unsure. If you're not, if you're unsure of um, your availability, typically uh, all of our customers have filled in this detail so that it gets sorted and we set up a time when we reach out to you. Uh, put up the time zone. And so there is a monthly webinar we are starting for our ADM service. Um, because we release everything every two weeks, we do have new features coming in very fast on ADM service. So uh, we plan to have a monthly webinar and we have multiple signups with the customer. Let us know if you would like to sign up and we will enroll you. So I'll uh, take a few minutes for you to fill in the right information. Uh, only the first two parameters are mandatory here. Rest all, if you're not sure, you can leave it blank. Preferably, but it'll be good to give the Citrix contact information. All right. Thanks, Neha. Thanks you so much for uh, the topic today and for sharing all of the advanced details. So, uh, it's, hey, it's, we lost you for a second. 
Yeah, so the session is still on. So I just, um, there are a few more slides left. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. <laughs> no hurry. So um, to summarize, uh, we have talked about all the features here. Web transaction, infra analytics, intelligent analytics, cloud native and bot management, all of it is available today on service uh, and some of it is already released in the last uh, ADM on-prem release. The global service graph is going to be out in this quarter. Um, look out for it. It's going to be released on service first. And uh, if you get a hands on it, let us know your feedback. You can always reach out to us. Um, you can probably fill up the form and then um, we can reach out to you. So this was the Intuitive Analytics Solution Suite, uh, which is smart, connected and actionable. Uh, across all the features that we had talked about serving all the user personas uh, that our customer base consists of. Thank you so much for your time. All right, thanks Neha, that was perfect. And it looked like, um, unfortunately, I couldn't do more of the live stuff than you expected, but uh, in the interest of time and everyone's attention, I appreciate you uh, working through that and, and carrying on. So fantastic, thanks so much for preparing the content and sharing it with us today. All right, so I'm gonna bring the, uh, bring the, take control again and bring it back to uh, my share. So thanks Neha. So we're gonna move now into what's happening this past month and what's going on and what'll be coming up. So uh, we're gonna keep the uh, webinar a little bit short and sweet today uh, in the interest of everyone's attention and time. And uh, hopefully it will be just as valuable as always. So what is new, what's happening? So we've had uh, a few topics uh, now for a couple of times on the webinar, all about cloud native networking and using Kubernetes with the Citrix ADC CPX product, as well as other products for ingress, bringing traffic into a Kubernetes cluster. So if you've heard about Kubernetes in your environment or you're wondering, or in your company rather, and you're wondering whether there is an integration uh, and how uh, the Citrix ADC can work with that, there's a new blog, it was just written recently by Rahul. Rahul is an actual developer, so when, if you were to uh, take a look at this blog, it's not uh, marketing, it's not just a quick high level. This one goes pretty deep, it actually gets you hands on to deploying the Strix Ingress controller, which is open source, and it brings and translates the configuration between say the Kubernetes controller and the policies that go on to the Citrix ADC. So if you want to get a little hands-on experience, Rakul does a great job of succinctly showing you how to get the controller and deploy it with a Citrix ADC. Next up is we have a lot of docs available specifically around uh, Kubernetes and getting, uh, you know, since it is a DevOps focused product, we've kind of changed the format of the docs a little bit. So it's no longer just a matter of like clicking on a few options in a GUI or command line. Now it's become much more focused on, you have to change scripts and modify scripts and apply them and make your config changes in batch. And so keeping uh, light on that new format, we've modified the docs slightly uh, since now the, the product may be maintained or run by your DevOps teams instead of yourself directly. So we have a new set of docs available for that product specifically in Kubernetes. So if you go to developer-docs.citrix.com projects, and, and you can see the link at the top of the slide, we have docs specifically tuned for developers and DevOps personnel to go in and learn how to leverage and configure the Citrix Ingress controller as more of a form of self-service rather than the typical model of you know, asking your administrator to make the changes for you. Finally, we have all of our videos, including the Networking Masterclass, available on YouTube under the Citrix Networking Playlist. It's not real easy to get to the playlist, uh, but if you know about it, it's really valuable uh, to, say, have that bookmarked in your browser. And then I constantly come back here and check for new videos and content on Citrix networking. So everything here is networking focused. It has to do with SD-WAN, it has to do with the ADC, Kubernetes, as well as ADM like you saw today. In fact, there's a, a lot of new videos specifically on um, the SSL dashboard, transaction analytics, application analytics, 
that you'll see uh, and uh, available on this specific playlist. Uh, so feel free to take a, a screen capture of this slide or you'll be receiving that in a link after the webinar. And I invite you to uh, bookmark the playlist listed on this slide because this is where a lot of the demos, including the ones, uh, part of the ones that you saw today are available in a nice succinct form factor. Uh, Neha went over the white glove program with you. Uh, again, here is the link to that form in Podio. Uh, the form is very basic. If you are interested in some of the new features and details today, I invite you to open up the web form and uh, apply or to enroll in the new white glove program with us so that we can get your hands on to the new features. And we would, you know, if it's something that's exciting to you, of course, we would love to get your feedback on those features so that we can fine tune them and roll out uh, even better products and features going forward. All right, so this comes up to the final part of the webinar. After the webinar, uh, we'll receive, or you'll receive a, a brief survey by GoToWebinar. I invite you to complete the survey. We do look at every single one of them. So uh, if you uh, fill out the survey, you'll be entered uh, for a chance to win a really nice Citrix backpack. This is huge. There are so many pockets in this backpack. Uh, every time I travel somewhere, uh, this is my go-to because you cannot have enough pockets and this backpack is awesome. So if you complete the survey at the end of the webinar, you'll be entered to win uh, a Citrix backpack filled with some pretty cool swag that we've got from the masterclass. All right, so thanks for staying with us, staying with us till the end. And that brings us to yet another ending of the masterclass. So it remains only to thank the fantastic crew, um, are your host, the presenters, and the folks on the panel today answering your questions, both for their time, for your time, and for sharing with us today all the great content that you saw on ADM. It takes a lot of preparation to get those analytics relevant and to make them displayable so that we can share all the value of the product today. Of course, also thank you to our audience for sticking around, for asking your questions, and for making this so much fun for us today. I'm Dave, and until next month, goodbye.